Okay. We move immediately to a vote on the question. The question is to authorize the town council president to sign the letter recommended by the finance committee regarding the Amherst Pelham Regional School District FY25 budget and FY26 budget process to the Amherst Pelham Regional School Committee as presented. Uh, we'll begin the vote in this case with Kathy Shane. So Lynn, just before I just just before this, we said you, we could send you minor changes. So if I vote for this, it, do I? Question was called. So I need to vote no if I want it exactly as presented, and I'm voting yes. no. Okay. Andy Steinberg. Yes. Jennifer Tapp. No. Pat DeAngelis. I'm sorry, Councilor Walker. No. Pat DeAngelis. Aye. Councilor Ette. Aye. Lynn Griesmer is an aye. Councilor Haneke. Aye. Bob Hegner. Yes. Councilor Lord. Nay. Cam Rooney. Yes. Councilor Ryan. Aye. Eight in favor, four opposed, and one absent. Thank you. Uh, we're going to go on to the next budget. I mean, the next budget. No, I think it's now the yeah. budget item. Thank you. Uh, we've already done D, which is water and sewer rates. We've done E because on the consent agenda. On the summer town council meeting schedule, this was originally on the consent agenda last week. We pulled it off. We've kept it off for this week. Um, and I have since sent the full council and particularly with attention to chairs, a laying out of the additional meetings and agendas as we know them for the moment um, for from now until the end of December, actually the first week of January. And uh, I, to the best of my knowledge, unless I've missed something, I haven't received any changes, but I'm certainly open to that discussion. But the question and the motion before the council is to amend the 2024 town council meeting schedule by removing the regular meeting on August 5th, 2024. Is there a second? Shane second, second. Rooney. Okay. Andy Joe, you asked for this to be removed, and so I'm going to, from consent. So please speak first. Yeah, no, I'm I'm am concerned. I thank the town manager for getting back to me on an email this morning. I obviously responded, so you were going to look into that. My concern was going more than thirty days between meetings when um, we are still awaiting a number of committee appointments, and if those appointments are not going to be made before the July fifteenth meeting. Um, it's for us to be able to confirm and approve at the July 15th meeting that they would lag for 30 days or 28 days until they are automatically approved or up to the next meeting. And if that would actually affect the ability of certain of these committees to meet, because that's my, I, I don't want to cancel a meeting if we actually need to be approving committee appointments at that meeting so that they can meet. And so I hope the managers figured it out. Yes, so um, the bulk of the appointments will come to the July 15th meeting. Um, there are still some vacancies that we don't have applicants for. Uh, we are prioritizing the committees that are um, that need the applicants to maintain a quorum. Um, nobody has expressed a uh, concern to me about not many, very few people meet during, you know, the, the, the big boards that meet are the boards that are appointed by the council, the planning board, zoning board. Um, the other committees are okay, are pretty good. So I think we can, we'll get through this. Okay. Any further questions? Mandy Jo? Okay. Motion's been made and seconded. We'll move to a vote. We're going to make it through the alphabet tonight. Mm -hmm. um, I think in this case, I start with Andy or do I start with Kathy? Andy. Yes. Jennifer Taub. Yes. Councilor Walker. Yes. Pat DeAngelis. Aye. Uh, Councilor Ette. Yes. 
Lynn Griesmer is an aye. Councillor Haneke? Aye. Bob Hegner? Yes. Councillor Lord? Aye. Pam Rooney? Yes. Councillor Ryan? Aye. Councillor uh, Kathy Shane? Yes. It's 12 in favor and one absent. Uh, we're going to move on to appointments, I think. We're ready for that. Oh, no. I, it's very short. I sent to you, and it should be in your packet, my compilation of all of the information I've received from you about the town manager's goals, both the ranking within the goals and the ranking across the goals. The, the email I sent explains that ranking in the goals, within each goal, you could go one to five or even beyond if there's more, and some people chose to and some people did not want to. And then across goals, if it was in your top five, you got a double X or you got an X. And if it was in the second five, you got just one slash. I have not gone and prioritized or done anything else. What I really want you to do is to make sure that I have properly transcribed your numbers onto this sheet both in terms of the rankings within the goals and the rankings across goals. So that if there are any changes, please send it to me individually, not to the full council. And if there are any changes that you would like to make in your own rankings, you may do that as well. The plan is that we will discuss this at our meeting on the 15th of July, at which point I would also like the council to seriously decide if there are certain goals that the council should spend an hour or so discussing because they need a little more clarity. And I would also like the staff and the, the town manager to let us know if they feel there are some goals that need a little more clarity, okay? So the purpose of this being on the agenda tonight was just say, do you understand what I've asked? <laughs> Councillor Ryan. So this discussion that may or may not take place would take place on July 15 or take place at a subsequent council meeting? It would take place on July 15th. The discussion about the overall goals will take place on the 15th. And on the 15th is when we would identify any areas in which we feel there needs to be a more concentrated conversation that we would then schedule into subsequent meetings. Are there any other questions? Please feel free to contact me if you need further guidance. Thank you. Um, we're going to move to appointments. The town manager does not have any appointments. The town council has two votes we need to deal with. I'm gonna place in motion the first of those votes and that is um, as recommended by the Governance Organization and Legislation Committee to appoint Andy Churchill, Bernie Kubiak, Raphael Rogers, Erica Michelin, Ken LeBlond, Meg Gage, Julian Hines, Dan Muscat, and Marcus Smith to the 2024 Charter Review Committee for terms to begin July 1, 2024 and expire on the presentation of the final report to the Town Council. Is there a second? Ryan, second. Um, uh, the, co the vice chair of GOL is with us tonight, Councillor Ette. Is there anything you would like to add to the report that was filed? Um, not a lot, except to say that I think we were a little bit slow in the process because we weren't able to get, at least initially, enough candidates to have a sufficient pool at the end, we were able to come up with 12 very well qualified um, candidates. And out of those, we chose nine. Of the nine we chose, it, we were looking at particular characteristics, um, some particular criteria. And I think that was demographic diversity, life experiences, community engagement, um, prior engagements with the charter data collection, government engagement, and representation from the districts. It turns out that we 
were able to get um, applicants from, or at least candidates from one, two, and five be successful. So I would use this um, brief opportunity to say that um, one of the challenges with the form of government that we have is finding people who will be willing to work um, to support the government. And we're looking always for more people to join that work in different capacities. But I would also like to thank all those who applied and congratulate those who ended up being voted by um, GOL. And I'm going to add only one or two little statistics, and that is at one point we actually had a pool of 19. We reached out to them to submit their um, statements of interest um, and uh, it reminded them of that two additional times and then followed up with phone calls and texts to get people to submit their statements of interest. And we were successful at that point in getting 12 of them to do so. So it was there was a significant effort made to try to bring people in. Are there any other questions? Councilor Lord. Is it okay to make a comment? Please. Okay. So not to make assumptions, even though I'm about to go making assumptions, I noticed that there are seven AMABs you, you all might refer to them as male, and I might be misrepresenting to two female or AFABs. AFAB is assigned female at birth. And, and I understand it's probably what the pool offered. And I just want to notice that it's very male or AMAB heavy, as is all our politics. And I just want to make that notice. Thank you. Except for the town council. Yeah, really. <laughs> and the school committee. Um, Jennifer. Yeah, my only comment is not a reflection on who was um, recommended by a GOL, but I was disappointed that there was only one applicant, happened to be a woman, um, who was a former counselor. And I think that someone in that capacity would have been very um, helpful to have on the Charter Review Committee. So I was disappointed that someone who had that experience um, isn't among the candidates recommended. Okay. Are there any other comments? Seeing none, we're moving to a vote. Jennifer, you're first. Yes. Councilor Walker. Yes. Pat DeAngelis. Aye. Uh, Councilor Ette. Yes. Lynn Griesmers and I. Councilor Haneke. Aye. Bob Hegner. Yes. Councillor Lord. Aye. Pam Rooney. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Yeah. Councillor Ryan. Aye. Kathy Shane. Yes. Andy Steinberg. Yes. It's 12 in favor with one absent. Planning board. The motion is to extend the terms of Doug Marshall and Janet McGowan to expire on the appointment of new planning board members. Is there a second? Second. Shane. Rooney. Okay. And let me just note, I believe we are planning to have those appointments by the 15th of July, right? Uh, Councillor Haneke. Thank you. Um, I just have a comment about the report here um, that implied that the committee voted to make this recommendation. And while maybe my memory is wrong, while I believe the committee had a discussion about it, I don't think we took a formal vote. And if we did take a vote, the committee, the report should actually indicate what that vote was. It doesn't indicate a vote, but it says this, it starts with this report is regarding the motion to extend the terms of the two planning board members, which implies that there was a motion or a recommendation to do so. And while I'm not gonna vote against this because of how it was worded, um, I don't actually think it's necessary to extend the terms under the law, unlike ZBA, but it makes some sense, even if it is just for two weeks on the way this one is worded. Um, I would appreciate if committee reports in the future um, are clear as to whether a committee actually voted and what that vote was. Pam, did you have any comment? There was no vote. Thank you. 
Are there any other questions or comments? Councillor Haneke, you still have your hand up. I don't think you want to hear. Okay, then we're going to begin the vote. In this case, it's with Councillor Walker. Yes. Pat DeAngelis. Aye. Councillor Ette. Aye. Lynn Griesmersen. Aye. Councillor Haneke. Aye. Bob Hegner. Aye. Councillor Lord. Aye. Pam Rooney. Yes. Councillor Ryan. Aye. Kathy Shane. Yes. Andy Steinberg. Yes. Jennifer Topp. Yes. It's 12 in favor, one absent. We did have two sets of minutes. We approved on the consent and there was another set that was not in the packet. So at this point, we are going to go on to committee and liaison reports, CRC. Uh, and please, while you're doing that, mention um, what your plans are for the summer. That would be useful, okay? Uh, Pam Rooney, CRC. Uh, the CRC, this is a report on the two meetings of June. Um, we will meet uh, tomorrow, June 25. Um, on June 11, we made our way through roughly three quarters of the nuisance bylaw as it had come back to us from GOL and the, and the town attorney. Uh, and participating staff were the building commissioner and chief of police, which we appreciate as always, um, as those the, those two people and their departments will be the primary enforcers of these this bylaw. Tomorrow evening, again, we faced exactly the same issue with a very small pool of candidates and encouraging them numerous, numerous times to submit a statement of interest. Um, we will begin our meeting tomorrow um, to fill the two um, impending vacancies and those statements of interest can be found on the, um, the CRC meeting notice packet for tomorrow. Um, the recommendations for, from that vote will come to you on July 15 for your approval. Um, as we just voted, actually not last night, but tonight we voted to uh, extend the, the terms of those two board members who would otherwise finish uh, this week. Um, also tomorrow, if we have time, we are going to continue to move forward on the nuisance bylaw. So that is the getting through nuisance, getting it back to the council for a first reading and then a second um, is probably going to take most of the summer because we just canceled the fifth, but that didn't seem, uh, it, August 5th, that did not seem worth bringing you all in here for our first or second reading of the nuisance bylaw. So it, it also has to go back to GOL first. Um, I was told it might not have to, but I but I will double check on that. Okay. We'll check. Thank okay. you. Yes. And the rest of the summer, um, we have we have a presentation at some point from the planning director on um, on the design guidelines and on the university drive overlay as being discussed by the planning board at this time. The rest of the summer would be spent on solar bylaw. Thank you. Oh, and we would like an extension of our deadline of, of June 30th um, to September 30th uh, to give us time to, to work on that. We don't usually vote extensions. We just accept the fact that, yeah, right. Uh, Councilor Haneke, you have your hand. Yeah, um, to follow up on my comment, under the last motion, um, the report that came in today from CRC um, had the wrong date for the vote of tonight, which you just mentioned. Um, it said last week we voted those extensions. Um, you corrected it just now. Um, um, but it also, you, you mentioned this motion to extend. And again, you had this on behalf of the CRC in the motion. And I know I didn't make the whole meeting last time, so maybe it happened in there. Um, but I don't think CRC as a whole made that request. I think it's you as chair making that request. So adding the on behalf of implies something else. I don't know. I'm I'm a very I, I I'm I'm you know I'm a stickler on on accuracy. I guess it is. But if it was the whole CRC again under our rules, the vote needs to be listed as to who voted what way and what that motion was. It was discussed, not voted. Jennifer. Yeah, I wouldn't interpret that wording to be that we voted. Okay. 
Are there any other comments or questions on CRC? Councilor Haneke. Elementary School Building Committee, Kathy Shane. Uh, as you know, we're only meeting once a month. We met on Friday with the good news that this the the pre-building work is basically done. Um, and it looks like we the, all the bidding documents will be out by the very beginning of July. So one of the things that, um, aside from other interesting items, the, the kids interviewed uh, one of our design teams about what this construction project, and they've done a little YouTube video of it. It was very cute. And the other is if you drive there, there is a pile of dirt, a really big pile of dirt. They've got enough dirt to weigh the same as a three-story building. So it's compacting down the dirt underneath it to be ready, and then that dirt will be spread. But they've actually somehow measured the weight of the dirt to, to do the building. So it's it's a pretty exciting moment as we move to the next phase of the building. And then in terms of summer plans, we have a July 16th, 19th meeting, and then an August 16th. So we're meet once, so now we're more in a phase of getting reports rather than making major decisions. Um, that's assuming the bids came in in a way that we're all happy with. And the bids are due when? The bids are due, um, well, I'm going to say end of August is when the bids are due. You know, so we'll be seeing that in September. Um, uh, uh, yeah. Great. Finance Committee, Bob Hegner. Yeah, we met last week, and uh, most of the meeting was devoted to a discussion of the uh, reparations fund and what options we have for uh, funding it and drawing it down. And it was a pretty wide-ranging um, conversation. Um, I am on, I am working on uh, developing some notional uh, spreadsheets. I did a quick and dirty one for the meeting, but some notional spreadsheets so people can play with, you know, how quickly we we fund it and how quickly we deplete it and do we deplete it all, et cetera, et cetera. So there's, there's going to be several options for looking at it. Um, uh, Councilor Haneke also brought up a series of options that were in the KP law memorandum. So I'm going to include that sort of the pros and cons of, of, of how to fund things. Uh, the other piece that we looked at was the, the, the infamous letter to the regional school committee. Um, but most of the time it was taken up by the, uh, the discussion of the reparations fund. And um, we don't really have a plan for the summer yet. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll try to get one uh, for our next meeting, which is on July 2nd. Okay, thank you. Uh, GOL, Rick. Nothing to talk about. Thank you. Um, actually, we do have two meetings. One is scheduled in July and one is scheduled in August. And the first that we will be bringing the finance recommendations forward is for the August meeting, because we don't meet again until August. It we we meet again on um, July. GOL meets in July um, on the 18th, and then we bring them forward. Yeah, and since finance is not a particularly active committee, we felt that would work. George. So this shows you how much I'm paying attention. Did we vote earlier to ex to not meet on August 5th? Yes. Thank you. I thought that's what we did. So we will meet again on August 19th. I'm sorry. I know I voted yes. <laughs> I know. We're meeting on July. I always 18th. vote yes, when I, except when I abstain. Right. Um, August 19th is the earliest that the FinCom appointments yes, could that's be. That's correct. Thank you. Okay. Um, Jones Library Building Committee. Pam? I'm looking. At, I'm looking at Paul. Oh, I'm um, sorry. He has George. It, I'm sorry, uh, George. Did you have anything more to say? And Bob, did you have anything to say? I, I just go ahead, George. 
Oh, uh, I just wanted to say that um, Bernie Kubiak, who's the one resident member of the finance committee, his he can stay on and meet uh, until he's his replaced. successor is replaced. Yep. Replaced or voted in. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Um, okay, Jones Library Building Committee. I'm looking. I'm looking at Paul because um, he could probably tell you the two things that I would announce because he did them. Sure. sure. So uh, the memorandum of agreement with the Jones Library Trustees has been signed as has a, a contract with extension with the um, uh, FAA, the architects. Uh, we don't have a Jones Library Building Committee meeting scheduled. Uh, the library director comes back from vacation on July 1st. I assume we'll get something scheduled when she gets back. Great. Any questions? TSO, Andy? Yes, TSO um, is meeting on Thursday. And uh, at our last meeting, we had a substantial discussion about the waste hauler reg um, bylaw and uh, the whole waste hauling system and uh, where that is at now is that um, I have a draft um, of a report to all of you to the council that is going to um, go into a packet tomorrow and be a, uh, so that it's in the hands of the committee two days in advance of the meeting. And uh, when we will have the opportunity as a committee to confirm that it accurately conveys what we talked about and where we are. So um, at the next meeting, we'll have a much more complete report on the 15th. Um, I'm not suggesting that we're going to be requesting council time and, um, in, in any significant way. Certainly, I don't expect any action to be requested but I felt that it was important that we do a comprehensive report about the reasons to do a uh, bylaw of this type, why it would be done, and what the challenges are, and um, that might stimulate discussion. So I hope that there's an opportunity to um, talk about the report then. The other two things we're going to be taking up on Thursday and uh, the meeting is going to be posted first thing tomorrow because it has to be. Um, our two road um, issues for first discussion, the, there were four things that were referred to us, two of them disposed of, the, and um, what happened was DPW and town manager asked that we focus on Belchertown Road and Heatherstone first, mm -hmm. and that we come back to the roundabout proposed for Amity Street and University Drive, and then for improvements on West Street in the section between Potwine and Long Meadow. And uh, so this will be our first opportunity as a committee to have a discussion um, with the uh, with with Mr. Mooring about it and about his proposal and uh, with the town manager. And uh, that then usually stimulates a little bit of process before it comes back to the committee. So those are the two things, are the, the things that are on the agenda right now. We don't have a summer schedule yet. Um, I do hope we have an opportunity to talk about that also when we meet on Thursday. Andy, when do you think you want to have the waste hauler discussion with the council? I don't, as I say, if there are questions that come up as a result of the written report that we file, I hope that there'll be at least an opportunity for people to ask questions at this point in the meeting. I don't anticipate that we're asking for a substantial amount of time, but uh, at least to get any initial questions out. Um, and uh, But it's going to take a little while, I think, before the committee has a concrete proposal or a decision on a concrete proposal. And uh, that's 
um, so we're moving in a direction. Um, but I wanted to let you know that we've uh, really come back to that and are giving very serious um, discussions about it. Kathy? Um, so I have a question on when you expect to talk about the roundabout at Amity. Um, I'd like to be there because I have questions about why not roundabout near Fort River School. So I just would like to be to, to hear the discussion. Uh, as I said, uh, uh, Thursday's morning's meeting, we will get a first presentation. What normally has happened in TSO, and this is uh, years of experience, is that there's a discussion in the committee. It is then referred to uh, TAC, uh, Transportation Advisory Committee, and the Disability Access Advisory Committee. And we ask them if they have comments and recommendations and uh, so that there's no action in the committee anticipated uh, by me as chair at the next meeting because I think that the most likely outcome based upon you know, common practices that it's just an initial presentation. Okay. Are there any liaison reports? Councillor Lord. Thank you. <clears throat> I would like to um, just quickly report out about the Community Safety Social Justice Committee. Um, the Crest Director attended the last meeting and it's exciting to hear them talk about out community outreach, access and collaboration. And then as some of you have seen in your emails um, regarding a, an appointment, there are a few, there are a couple vacancies um, and there has been a lot of support or, and this counselor also supports the reappointment of Deborah Ferreira as um, a strong candidate who amplifies the voice of many who don't get to the table quite yet. Or, um, yeah, and so I just um, wanted to lift that up here. She was also on CSWG, so she um, has the institutional memory that might help our community safety social work. Thank you. Not Thank social work, social justice committee. Thank you. Jennifer? Um, Paul may already know this, but um, the Council on Aging at in its meeting in June, that's the last meeting that they'll have a quorum. So I don't know if that had been communicated or if I don't believe they were <clears throat> meeting until the end of the summer, but they'll need a quorum. They'll need um, some new appointments before they can meet. Thank you. Any other committee liaison reports? Paul, any particular comments? No written report this time, of course. Right. So a few things. One, um, just to, to you, we all heard about the 911 outage and just compliment our staff in terms of responding to that. There's very little communication coming from the state. Our, um, our, our communication, our dispatch director was on vacation. So our second in command was in charge. Our communications manager was on her third day on the job. So it was uh, a lot, but it, we, we got through it. Uh, we had a debrief and a after action analysis of the, um, of the event and how we communicate, how we communicated with each other this afternoon. And that was really helpful because so, um, a lot of people have really detailed notes and uh, with some lessons learned, we, we don't think 911 will go out again. I think that we've learned that lesson, but there'll be something else. And so we're really um, happy to have gone through that, that search that um, the, the review of it. Um, we, we have received a mass trails grant, um, for $110,000 to create a shared use path at, um, Hickory Ridge that will connect East Hadley road residents with Amaroy village. So it'll cut through Hickory Ridge. So there'll be a nice path that connects folks to the, the, sh the shopping area in Pomeroy village. We're also part of a, a small part of a, another, um, uh, grant under mass trails that will start from I-91, um, the park and ride in, in Deerfield and go down 116 to Meadows, just beyond Meadows Street. So this will create a path for people to start to get to uh, that a lot of people travel along Route 116. That's really the purpose. This was initiated by the town of Sunderland and we supported that in terms of you know, being a, um, th th creating more pathways um, for people. Um, 
the North Common is taking shape. I'm not sure if you haven't seen if you've seen it, but plantings are in, the trees are in, the, the bush, the shrubberies are in, the, the granules are are being planted. So it certainly takes some shape in terms of it's not just this a lot of uh, blank. The grass is starting to turn green, so it's it's they're moving pretty rapidly right now. And last, I just want to thank all of you who are able to come to Chief Nelson's retirement. Um, he was really excited by the event that so many of you took the time to to see him off. Uh, he's still got another. He's he's still here till June thirtieth. He's on he's his he's the chief in charge this weekend, so he'll be working to the last day. Um, <laughs> but he was just very um, flattered and uh, really pleased. We talked a couple times a day, and he just is just brimming with. Um, with thanks for everybody who came out. So thank you for that. And thanks to Angela Mills, who just put everything together with support. It's amazing. Very nice. Okay. Um, I did submit a written report if you have any questions. And I, I do want to note, I'm sorry that Arlie has left uh, in the audience, but the reason we go through the process that we're going through for the trustees is because that is how the charter has indicated we replace people when term when we're not in the election season. So if somebody resigns during the election, during a period where there is no election, we actually go through this process. We've done it for school committee. We've done it for the housing um, authority. And now we're doing it for the uh, library um uh, trustees. It's a very prescribed process in the charter. Andy, you had a question? Yes, or suggestion, and that is simply that we had a uh, discussion a lot earlier today about charter school funding formula and uh, when you have an opportunity to raise that in meetings with our legislative delegation, I think that uh, we would appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. I also want to mention that I learned from Mindy Dom today that she filed six amendments for various monetary amounts in the um, economic development bill. Those include solar canopies for parking lots, sidewalks, road repair and repaving, DPW facility, fire station, and senior center feasibility study. She doesn't have any sense of whether they will make it or not, but at least they were filed. And uh, Representative Blaze, she has supported her bill to create a public safety and municipal building authority. So we are in contact. <laughs> um, are there any uh, future agenda items? Okay, seeing none, I'm going to make a motion to adjourn and seek a second. Second. I'm sorry, Councilor Walker. Yes. Um, it's okay. I wasn't, I didn't want to um, suggest any future agenda items, but I thought that there might be a section for counselor comments at the end. Um, and I did just want to make a comment. I didn't think it was appropriate during the liaison section because I'm not a liaison to any committee. Um, but I did also want to make a comment um, regarding Councillor Lord's comment on the Community Safety and Social Justice Committee, and just also vocalize my very strong support in the reappointment of Deborah Ferreira as a member of the Community Safety and Social Justice Committee. Um, as one of the original members of the CSWG, it is completely critical for her continued engagement and involvement around these topics, considering that she was, you know, a part of the founding vision and she pre presents a, you know, a type of continuity that wouldn't exist otherwise. Um, there are multiple vacancies on that committee that have not been filled. And I do understand that the town manager has the intention of allowing her to continue to serve until those vacancies are filled despite her term ending on June 30th, uh, which is in a couple of days. Um, but I'm advocating for beyond that, I'm advocating for a reappointment and I think that the town manager stated that his reason for not reappointing Deborah Ferreira was because that she had already served two terms. It was like a term limit, but they're two separate committees. And I don't see that that is being a force, uh, enforced. Otherwise, we have 
voted tonight to reappoint people to other committees that have already served a term. And so I'm not understanding why that would matter when the CSWG is not the CSSJC. The CSWG no longer exists. Um, and this is her first term serving on the CSSJC. And there are already vacancies that are not filled. And so again, I just want to voice my support and my hope that the town manager will reconsider that decision and decide to reappoint Deborah Ferreira. She has played an integral role in community safety in our town and for bringing a voice to marginalized communities in our town as somebody who engages with the community at a ground level and is very involved in community and who is an attorney and who works at UMass. Um, I think she has a, a different level of knowledge and she definitely shows capacity and the desire to continue to serve our town considering the difficulty that we sometimes have getting people to serve on committees, I think we ought to use this and recognize this as a really fortunate opportunity for our town and that we ought to take advantage of that opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Ette. Just wanted to throw in a few words about tone, tone um, for the town and tone for the council. Um, I understand and realize that people are passionate, members of the community are passionate about um, issues that they're interested in, but I think it helps to take a few moments to consider what is said and what is written. Perhaps I can speak for myself. I'm a human being who, when I'm pricked, I bleed, and so I hope, not just for myself, but for members of the town that we pay a bit more attention to how we express ourselves, because with the wrong tone, the message gets lost. And what is more important is the message. And I hope we can be a bit more compassionate, gracious to each other, and with regard to the council, especially for this evening, there were a few moments where things got a bit testy. I think in these hallowed, they call this a hall, you know, but in this hallowed room, um, we have an opportunity to model um, a sense of decorum that can then be displayed within the town. Thank you. Are there any other councillor comments? I'm going to make a, I did make a motion to adjourn and was it seconded? Second. Okay. We do have to vote. And we start the vote with uh, Councillor Walker. Yes. Pat DeAngelis. Yes. Councillor Ette. Aye. Lynn Griesmer. Aye. Councillor Haneke. Aye. Bob Hegner. Yes. Councillor Lord. Aye. Pam Rooney. Yes. Councillor Ryan. Abstain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kathy. <laughs> yes. Uh, Andy Steinberg. Yes. Jennifer Tom. Yes. It's, it's 11 in favor, one abstain and one absence. You can stay here all night. It's up to you. Thank you.